p.m. in the City Commission Chambers in Clouston, Florida. In attendance are Chairman Mitchell Wills, Vice Chair Emma Bird, Commissioner Daryl Harris, Commissioner Raymond Iglesias, Commissioner Carson Turner, County Administrator Jennifer Davis, County Attorney Mark Lapp, Clerk Kimberly Barano. Thank you, ma'am. If you're here tonight and you wish to speak, if you would, there's uh, cards you could fill out. If you would, fill those out. Uh, pass them back up this way. We get to that item on the agenda, we'll call you and in that order. Um, first thing on the agenda tonight is under bids 2021-19, Board of County Roadways. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve uh, awarding the bid to Marks Activating Incorporated as long as staff still agrees with that. Second. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Bird. Is there any discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Hey, uh, we are pulling C2. Yes, sir. Shane, do you, the company that, that got kicked out, did you tell them that they needed to provide a bid bond and explain to them? I know it's not your purview, but, hey, you guys understand what that is so you can bid on the next one? No, sir, we didn't tell okay. them. Okay. I was just wondering because sometimes that's helpful. I don't know if they're a younger company or what, you know. And then, we, you know, the one that we awarded to, they left out three or four things, too, you all had. But obviously none of those are – they're all immaterial. But, you know, I just – trying to make it where if I mean, this we were a multi-million dollar project – and we had those things, and now somebody protests, you know, it's kind of, we're going into a, a bad area of, of waving those things. It's just so. he forgot to fill a public entity yes, statement sir. out. Yep. He's our current contractor, so. Uh, Good. Move, move to set the consent agenda. You know, C, okay. C, I can't remember what, C2. Pull C2. C2. Yes, sir. Second okay. that motion. Okay. A motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turner. Any discussion? And none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Commissioner Turner? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I, Shane, I should have talked to you about it earlier today. Um, it looked to me as what you presented to us. The three entities all were bidding the Skags at the same amount. Uh, I don't have any ownership in Wolf, but they're in Glades County. Um, this may sound hokey to y'all, but they buy a handful of pigs. They come to Henry County, they buy some. They go to LaBelle, they buy some. They buy $100 dinner tickets. I don't know anybody from Barry's. Pretty sure it's probably borderline illegal what I'm saying, but the gist is our community supports our community. Mm -hmm. I know it's a Glades County entity. Why can't we buy them from them? You can. You can buy them. The only reason we chose Barry is because they had the equipment in stock already. The other one, we had to wait till the equipment came in. But if you want to go with I would, Wolf's, I would prefer that fine. board. And the reason being is I can imagine a $42,000 hit is a pretty substantial number to an entity of that nature in in. More haven. Is that a motion? I'll second I'll, that. I make that in the form of a motion. Just, just so you'll know why they're going with Barry. We've been using berries for 18, 19 years through the county. Um, we've dropped mowers off an hour later and went back and got them. Uh, nothing against wolves. We use wolves as well. Um, the issue is going to be is when you're going to get your equipment because that, that equipment they're telling me right now is not being shipped. I don't know how long it's going to be. That, that's that. going to be part of your issue because determine how quick you need it. Um, but do we need to have the equipment? now i mean we need it now but i can wait somewhere i don't know how long but it's going to be i'll Shane, be waiting a while i also want to make it a matter of point here i'm not saying we don't need a mowers if, if there's a, a tool that gets used yeah no no i, I get it just I imagine get it. these jokers are everywhere <clears throat> but i would love for us to be able to utilize wolf if we could i think that in the form of a motion second okay motion by mr turner second by mr iglesias any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. opposed I'm going to tell you guys in that situation there that you, it's apples for apples, but the service is not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, so, just so you know that. Well, you might they, be sitting for months waiting on service where berries you're waiting on. If, if they buy them from them, will they sir, uh, berry service them? Well, berry's going to be mad to service them. I mean, the reality is they'd rather have the whole kit and caboodle. Berries are some of the best people you come across. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to service it no matter what. But my point is that you get what you pay for. You get the service that you pay for, so. Mr. Yeah. Chair. Yes, ma'am. How, how long would it take for the equipment to come in? Yeah, about he can't answer that because a contractor can't answer that. I was just at the store two days, uh, actually yesterday, I'm sorry, yesterday I was at the store, and everyone's having the same issues. They can't get nothing shipped. Uh, they told me what they have in stock. That's all they have, and they don't know when they're going to get That's it anymore. That's really with everything. We ordered furniture, and it's, what, three months ago, and we haven't gotten it yet, so I'm curious to see how long it's going to take to get the equipment months. in that's not in that you need. So. Okay. Just. Uh, next thing is uh, staff reports. We got a resolution action, correspondence action. Oh, we got some action. I didn't see that. You don't have none there, Mark. You slipped one in on me. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution as presented. Second. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Harris. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Staff reports, Mr. Lapp. Yes, so um, ready for redistricting again every 10 years. Uh, the census data was delayed from the spring to till now, or near now, which uh, prevented us from working on it until now. Uh, in my staff report, I said that the uh, data would be coming out Monday, which is what the Census Bureau said, like, I don't know, eight days ago or so when I looked. But um, I heard late last week they've moved it up two days, so it's supposed to become available Thursday this week, so a few days earlier. And so uh, Stephen McCormick, our GIS coordinator, he's going to get to work on it, start loading the census data into the his system. You know, our first cut will be to put the existing data, or the new data, onto the existing maps. You know, ideally, you know, perfect set, perfect, perfect world, we'd be able to keep everything as it is. So we'll check that first. And so um, after putting that onto the existing maps, then have to make some adjustments, some logical boundary adjustments maybe. We'll try to follow, you know, some of those pro, um, guidelines I set forth in the memo. And then we'll be able to produce a draft, draft for you, hopefully, for the last meeting in September. The last meeting in September. Does the voter's office have anything to do with that? Well, yes. I, I consult with her a lot, and I will. Yeah, for sure. All right. Oh. That's no action, but it's just, uh, and if you do have preferences as far as boundary changes, you know, areas you'd like to come see go in or out of your districts, you know, say so. You know, we'll try to. We'll try Don't to. even think about it, Mr. Harris. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell by the smile on your face you was thinking. Mark, can you not let Mr. Harris know he has that option? <laughs> okay, so it's going to move into old business. Um, Chairman, if, if I can. Yes, ma'am, please. I have an agenda addition before you and emailed Brian Friday, I believe, or maybe it was yesterday, on the uh, camera for the jail. If I can get your. I make approval. a motion to approve the camera uh, as presented. Uh, the increase, or excuse me, the, the purchase order of twenty eight thousand fifty dollars and sixty cents. Uh, and and I mean, y'all see what that quote is? I'm sure. I so. second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Bird. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have two items, I think, still while we're kind of under business that are that are simple, but I'd really love to have action on them if at all possible. Sure. Uh, I reached out to some members, or excuse me, I reached out to a member of the LaBelle Pop Warner. I don't know what it's called. It's Longhorn Association, I don't know what it is, but y'all know what I'm talking about, where the little people run around with uniforms that look real cool. Um, and the Clouston Cougars have reached out to me. As y'all remember, in Harlem one time, it was a very heated meeting because I said not no, but heck no, we don't need to give them any money. Uh, for their new uniforms because they didn't have their ducks in a row in my opinion uh, you know they came and asked us with a blanket statement however now um and i can provide this stuff to the county administrator and i apologize Jennifer, for not giving this to you earlier but they have both showed me po's where they're wanting to buy uniforms for a gross amount of their athletes i think that there's some stuff in there for cheerleaders but i have gotten a guarantee from both organizations that if they get money from us they will they will reorganize some things to make sure that they can do some capital improvement upgrades across the across the leagues that they're in. As y'all know, we used to give upwards of twenty thousand dollars to different people in in kind contributions. We've cut all that out. Now the economy's kind of come back a little bit. I would love to see us give a ten thousand dollar to both sides. If y'all don't feel comfortable doing ten thousand, I'd love to give five thousand to both sides. The the La Costa Cougars and the LaBelle Longhorns. Is it LaBelle Longhorns? Yeah. And I'd love to give that to them and say, we hope y'all put this towards uniforms because y'all trying to upgrade. But if they don't, you know, however they want to spend it, let's let them spend it. What are y'all's thoughts? Uh, I, th I think we should start out five. Okay. All right. I agree with the five. Just see where they go with it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> on both of them. So ten thousand dollars total. Yeah. All right. I like the ten on both <clears throat> sides. To be honest with you, these organizations, it's it's tough. When you get helmets recertified, I dealt with Pop Warner LaBelle for 30 years. Every year we had a shortfall of helmets because we couldn't get them certified. Shoulder yes, pads couldn't get certified. This is something that has to be done every year. And, and that, that being said, your Cluiston Cougars and your LaBelle Longhorns are your Cluiston Tigers and your LaBelle Cowboys. Absolutely. If we don't start putting back into these organizations, our, our high schools are going to falter. Do we fund that through East and West Rec? Or just no, sir, we don't. Um, we, this would be out of general fund. We take care of the fields. 
We just resurfaced the field for twenty thousand dollars. We can take that out of Daryl's sidewalk. Money. There we go. Take it out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, y'all aren't liking five. Uh, they aren't like in 10,000. What do we go 7,500 of both sides? I think that they'll be tickled to death because, like I said, I, I think it's at least 2008, but it may have been, it's been nine that we, you know, we stopped. We cut all that out. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we used to give a, we used to give a lot of money to a lot of different entities. They, and they so, stopped when I got in. Yeah. I make it in the form of a motion 7,500 to both sides. Y'all good with that? I'll second that. Okay. okay. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Iglesias. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank the you. last little bit I had, Mr. Chair, and I don't know if we'll be able to take action on this tonight. I brought this before the board a number of years ago, and um, and Attorney Lapp, I believe you were the catalyst that said we can't do it, but I don't really remember exactly why. Daryl, I don't think you were in favor of it because you just said we're putting too much liability on the county. Long and the short of it is, Henry County Fair and Livestock Show here in Clouston, we've been fortunate enough to be able to receive upwards of $1.2 million from the state of Florida. And even with that uh, money, we're, you know, that organization, I would say to it, we're, uh, but that organization uh, does a lot for our community, but they don't make a dollar. Oh, Y'all realize that, right? They're, they're the definition of a 501c3. The board used to pay for their mowing. Some years it was 36000 Some years it was only like 6000 but the board just kind of, you know, road and bridge did that, I believe. They don't want to do that, but their number one overhead item is their insurance, their general liability, uh, their general liability and property and casual, casualty. They've PNC, probably had increases the last three years. They've so. had huge increases, Commissioner Iglesias. I would like to ask our county administrator, if y'all are okay with this, to meet with the fair board at your at your convenience miss davis you know because i think that they'll be receptive to this and then i'd like for our legalese to tell us why we can't make that part of our umbrella of insurance um you know and and you may say well you can't do that because somebody walks in there and they walk down the hallway and their femur shoots out the side of their leg and you're opening up the county to to undo liability what i would what i would submit to you all is you know that could happen at any of our facilities that is the definition of a facility that gets utilized by the people for peanuts on the dollar and it, and it generates a tremendous amount of interest in our community. I would love to have a very good discussion with y'all on why this is a bad idea. And, and I want to know if y'all think that's okay for staff, for Jennifer to meet with them. Carson, why couldn't they just buy the insurance separate? They do. They do and buy they, insurance. And st stay away from the county. Just uh, buy it separate. Or would it be cheaper? I'm open to anything. I just think that this is something where if we could help them with the operation of their overhead, I think it would be big bangs for their bucks. It would allow them to do some things that they, they wanted to do, but they can't take incremental steps in like, you know, there's an old stage that they have out there. They wanted to refurbish that to make it have the ability to do outdoor uh, events in the fall. You know, they did a couple things. They can't do it. So if y'all are okay with it, I'd love for Ms. Davis to just meet with them and see if there's one way they could skin that cat. You know, different than what they've done in years past. Yeah, That's that, all I'm asking for at this point. Yeah, Let them bring something back. Her and Mark look okay. into it. All right. I mean, it's worth the discussion. I mean, we already know from Hurricane Wilma what PRM's done. But at the end of the day, I think they're going to come back and say that we have no ownership to that property. Yeah. Now, typically, if even though we didn't own it, we should be able to insure it if we had care, custody, and control. Yeah but we don't in this situation. Yeah. So, I mean, it's worth the conversation, but I think that's what it'll come back at. But it's better to let them insure it. Yeah. And, and I'm all about that. And that's something that we can, you know, look at, you know, just cutting a percent thereof. I will tell you this. I know that, like, in Glades County, for example, their arena and all of that, that is a, I'm not 100% sure. Mark, it would be really good for us, I think, to investigate that. That's a separate 501c3 standalone. Glades County Youth Livestock, I think, is what it is. <laughs> But they have a perpetual 99-year lease for like zero dollars that Glades County, you know, underwrites a tremendous amount of their things. And, you know, I don't need to get into how raucous Chalanica is, but, you know, they, they have more than a couple of train wrecks in that arena every year and a heck of a party that happens in the Doyle O'Connor. And, you know, they're, they're seeing fit. But that may be, we may discover that the county has no affiliation with that. Either way, I would love to see what it is there. I do know this. One of the last acts that Commissioner Pryor took as a, as a sitting commissioner in Glades County was to help catalyze um, completely roofing their arena. I know that Glades County proper is going to put a tremendous amount of money into that facility, and they do that routinely. 
along with their dance and the generation that they have off of sales of, of that party that they have. So, you know what their premiums are at the fair board? No, sir. I do not know. I know that they could get that to you very easily, though. They know them, and I know they're they're a, they're a hard nut for them to crack every year. Well, I think putting back into the community, uh, Commissioner Turner, I think that's something we should really be looking at now to try to help with. Yes, sir. So I think it's a good good idea. You know what? The conversation doesn't hurt to have the conversation. There may be some way that we can, if we can't ensure it ourselves, maybe there's some way we can, like you said, help with the funding of it. Yes, sir. So I think it's a good conversation to have, Ms. Davis. Well, thank you. It might be something oversight. You know, it might yes, be so much of the insurance, but we might be able to contribute to make it a little light weight for them. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> okay. Um, got one card for tonight. Um, Chuck, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name, sir. Chuck Spurk. 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 If you would like to come up, yes, sir. <laughs> Don't worry. Everybody calls me Wells and Willis, so I, I get it. I just, I just didn't want to mess it up. So. Oh man. Talk Take about a deep me. breath on this one. Well, thank you, Board of County Commissioners and staff, for the opportunity to address the community um, <clears throat> on a concern. Uh, the topic I'd like to discuss tonight, uh, it's been up in front of you guys uh, many, many times over the last 20 years probably, is Banyan Village. Banyan Village is an old Port LaBelle subdivision. It was formed and platted in the 1970s by General Development Corporation and uh, with cooperation of of uh, Henry County. As we all know it today is uh, Port LaBelle units 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, et cetera, 1 through 9, Glaze 102, and units 10 through 13, respectively. Banyan Village specifically is almost four square miles. It's on Highway 80, approximately four or five miles further east of what we know as Port LaBelle proper. Uh, it uh, intersects Highway 80 at Lexington and Wellington. It's got approximately 3,800 buildable lots. It's, uh, again, all quarter acre zone lots. GDC um, went bankrupt, as, as most are aware, in the late 90s, uh, early 2000. CHL, our country homes and land, which is uh, myself, came in in 2001, 2002, and, and bought a very substantial amount of, of lots from GDC. We've been part of your community for a long time. Probably paid 15 to 20 million dollars in property taxes, built three, 400 homes, et cetera, so on and so forth. Specifically, the reason I want to speak to you about Banyan Village tonight is we're talking about trying to right a ship that um, has gone awry. And, and we talk a lot about, you know, equal access and rights and being fair. Uh, it seems to be very popular um, between the haves and the have nots as of recently. I like to use the analogy of education. Education, every child deserves a right to have equal opportunity and access to an education. I think we all agree with that, and that's not very defendable to see it any other way. Um, subdivisions or lot owners are much the same. Every subdivision needs infrastructure, and every subdivision should have the right for equal opportunity and equal, equal access. Banyan Village and Port LaBelle 1 through 9 and Glades 102 proper have not been equal over the last 30 or 40 years. In fact, one could argue 50 years, almost 48 years. Um, it's a longer conversation than tonight. It's really not relevant. Some of it's in our rearview mirror. But basically, Banyan Village has been denied or had inaccessible the basic things that you need to pull a permit. So I, I, I leave this thought with you guys, and, and I'd like to, to, to have you guys think about this for a minute. Port LaBelle, one through nine, has almost 2,000 rooftops or 2,000 families living in it today, with another seven or 800 under permitting for new construction, for a total of almost 2,800 rooftops. Banyan Village has one. Same developer, same lots, four miles apart. One would ask, why is there such a difference? The simple difference was access to infrastructure. Water, which the county has solved in 2008, Took us a while, but we got there. And just when it finally got the water and provided that equal opportunity, because any time up to 2008 before, if a person owned that lot and was sold a bill of goods, so to speak, those 2,800 lot owners that owned them besides the developer at GDC, they were SOL. They were out of luck. 
They could go to the building department and say, I'd like to pull a permit, and they weren't allowed to because it was illegal to build because it didn't have portable water. So 2008, there was the first time there was opportunity. But then what happened? The market crashed. And not just LaBelle, not just Henry County, not just Florida, across the country. So today we're in a different position. Just as I heard you, Commissioner, speak just a little while ago, the economy is a little better, the wind's at our back, et cetera, et cetera. There's an amazing opportunity to right the ship. We, CHL, has signed a partnership with CenturyLink. It's a $3.5 million fiber build. It's FTH, fiber to the home. For those that may be aware or unaware, fiber is 400 times faster than, say, DSL or satellite linkage. I'm positive, and I know from first working hand that you guys are working diligently to provide this for all areas of Henry County, but it takes a lot of money, and it takes grant money, et cetera, et cetera. It's chasing it. It's trying to get the approval. It's trying to get it implemented. It's trying to install it. You have a unique opportunity today that it's being gifted to the county or gifted to the people. So we've been diligently working this on this for, for over a year. That fiber build today is in jeopardy. I'll go on to explain here shortly. I'll try and wrap this up and not to keep a thing. So again, I'd like you to keep in mind as we come to draw this to a conclusion, there's 2,800 homes in Port LaBelle and only one in Banyan Village. And that in itself by itself speaks volumes. The simple reason is that it's a traditional um, example of the haves and have nots. If you live over here, you were good because you had things that you needed to build a house and you could go into the, to the building department and get it. If you lived over here, not so much, whether you were missing water, whether you were missing power, whether you were missing both. Today, to this day, Banyan Village has a problem with power. A person can buy a lot for two or $3,000 and it's $10,000 to get power to it. So we organized a coalition of builders, of local builders and national builders. And we have organized a group that are going to build 30, 40, 50 homes at a time. And if you build 30 or 40, 50 homes at a time, it does solves a lot of problems. The power company will now come to the table and bring you power to the people for free, which is a big check mark off the list that was never available. The county gracefully has solved the water problem as of 2008. We checked the checklist on that. So the last thing would be internet access. And here you have an opportunity tonight to have fiber optics, FT, FTH, something you don't have in most other places in the county at no cost to the county, but an entitlement for the people. So I'd like to keep that in mind as we move down to the bottom of the agenda and to the bottom of this presentation. So I'd like to see the ability of inaccessibility and, and, and access denied. I'd like to see that today we don't repeat history and that we have that opportunity for the people and for those lots. A lot today, just so you might know or, or be interested, a lot of Port LaBelle 1 through 9 is fetching in today's market north of $20,000. A lot in Banyan Village today is still two or $3,000. Because what happens in Banyan Village? They four-wheel out there. Not that there's anything wrong with four-wheeling. I, I happen to enjoy four-wheeling. But again, because it's not perceived as a community, we can't make that happen. We met with the CDD. The Coalition of Builders want to donate a sign to the community somewhere in the term of twenty-five dollars to $30,000 that'll put this at Lexington and 81st, phase one, and phase two at Wellington and Highway 80. We have CenturyLink committed for a year with a contract to bring power and, and fiber optics to all the lots, not just CHL's lots, but all 3,800 lots. And they'll bring it out in phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And I think staff has been working diligently, and, and I give... Uh, uh, Commissioner, it makes us a lot of credit for listening to me for nine months, get on my soapbox and tell him why this would be good, et cetera, et cetera. And he's painfully tired and exhausted, and I don't blame him. But we're in a position now to make this happen. Now, there's going to be a point an issue come up that CHL and a lot of other lot owners in Banyan Village are behind on their taxes. Why are they behind on taxes? Well, if you have a lot that's assessed at $2,000 or $2,500 or even, say, $2,800, and the taxes on it are $5,000, this poses a basic arithmetic problem. Nobody's going to invest in something or put something that is upside down in value. We can cure that problem. So, in fact, we have cured that problem. The county, being in village, for the first time after a failed subdivision of 48 years, 
has over 50 homes committed to, with 15 coming out of the ground as we speak, with another 35 in permitting, to come out and bring you 40 to 50 new homes in the next two to three months, which is about 10 to $15 million of new product on the tax roll. So what happens with that? Infrastructure is cured, fiber gets installed, the values of the community go up, the other lot owners will pay their taxes because it's done. In good faith, CHL has paid $2.2 million in back to taxes in the last 18 months in Hendry County. CHL has a very large debt or has a, a, a large upside down imbalance because again, there was no infrastructure before. We worked diligently to solve that. As of yesterday, we paid the county another, another almost $1.1 million in back to tax on Banning Village, only to return today for another $1.3 million. We paid just in the last two days $2.3 million, which is just about 50% of all back to tax on Banyan Village. That's a big bet, and it's a big gamble. And it's the average of $3,800 or $3,900 per lot, which exceeds the value of the lot still today. But we believe, and we believe for the people, that this can turn around. We think there could be parity in Port LaBelle 1 through 9 and Glades 102, provided BV has the same opportunity. So I actually looked and didn't see him come tonight, but uh, Rob Gilson from DR Horton was going to be with you. He's met with Commissioner Iglesias, and he's committed to doing 10 homes per month or 120 homes in Banyan Village over the next year. They've already brought them into the community in October of last year. They built 80 homes in Port LaBelle 1 through 9. <coughs> Their business plan this year is to do 250 new homes, half of them being in Banyan Village. D.R. Horton is very loud and clear. He shared this with Commissioner Iglesias again. There's only two requirements they have. They won't buy tax deeds. There has to be a good warranty deed. And um, the fiber needs to be there because that's the differentiator, and they think that's the game changer that will bring people in. So with that, I'd like to wrap up and close. Partnership, 1300 I just don't want to make sure I miss anything because this is a very significant amount of money and a very significant amount to the county. So CHL, in recap, has, has brought to the county and paid more than 50% of the deficit, and we're willing to pay the other 50% provided we get some relief from the county, and hopefully we'll be able to make that ask tonight. 40 homes are under construction, which is 10 to, million, 10 to $12 million of new homes, which that will generate in revenue about $5,000 per home, so about $200,000 in new taxes per year. And most importantly, power, fiber, water, new homes will change BV and hopefully put it on parity to where it was before. So back in April, this board approved to take tax deed application on 400 BV lots. And for right, I guess for good reason. There was back due taxes. They exceeded the value of the land. And there was bond money involved in that to put the water in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you weren't receiving that. You were only getting paid from like two-thirds of the lots. P.S., if you go back and look at Banyan Village has paid in taxes since its inception or platting more than $40 million to this county. One home out there. Seems like that's been a one-way street. There's $1.5 million annually collected in taxes in Banyan Village, which is four square miles of property. If we take four square miles of property, say, just to the east called Lexington Groves, that's $7,500 per section, or $30,000 per year. So $30,000 versus $1.5 million. It's a great discrepancy. So I believe what's best for the county, what's best for the taxpayer, what's best for the people is to right the ship of, 20, of 48 years of failed subdivision that people bought this with a dream to be able to build, but still today can't build. We have all the parts in place. You have builders, you have a national builder, you have fiber, you have free power. We have roads coming in with the CDD. Four, four roads were repaid last year with the CDD. We have budget now to do about six more miles or seven more miles. Each one of these houses and rooftops come on, they pay almost $1,000 into the CDD, and by 70% of that money is going towards new roads. So we've literally solved all the problems in the infrastructure for the county at no cost to the county. So going back to April, you guys approved 400 tax deed lots that brought to the courtroom steps. 
My question is, why those 400 and not the other 1,600? Why Banyan Village and no other place in, in all of Henry County? Again, it was to try and get the tax deeds caught up to help pay for the bond money for the water. Just presented to you tonight, $2.5 million has been given to the county for those back due taxes in the last two business days. Followed up by another $2.2 million that's been paid by us for the last 18 months with another promise to forward the next $2 million that it took. It's a big gamble. $5 million out of our pocket for a lot that's worth a few thousand dollars. It, it, it keeps a person up at night. But I asked tonight to seek relief <coughs> to have the board that they approved in April the 400 lots for tax deed to stay just one more year. And here's what the county will get if you adopt that or you think that's a good idea. You've already gotten and received $2.5 million in back due taxes. <coughs> the fiber bill, you would get another $2 million. You will have achieved your objective in taking all your non-performing lots and made them perform, which is the whole goal of bringing tax due sales. Or we can wait for a year and dribble with you at a time. I'd like to summarize and finish with this. In May, eight BV lots were taken to the courtroom steps by a different applicant, not the county, but an individual, a tax investor group. Six of those <laughs> lots were only two to three thousand dollars in opening bid. They weren't bid on. They went back to the applicant. Lots that you decided in Banyan Village, or you're trying to take the Banyan Village, which just puts an extra tax on you instead of getting paid for seven years. I know the ask is eight. You lose the extra year, but those are at five thousand dollars. The county's going to end up with the majority of those lots of land available. That won't get you the infrastructure, that won't get you homes, that won't increase the tax flow, and it won't achieve your, your end goal. We have a solution in place. I've met with almost everybody here individually, or many of you individually. We've shown you what we have. We've brought in the players for credentials, so you don't have to believe what I'm saying. So, in closing tonight, I would ask that the board take action and to vacate that 400 block tax deed application. You're the beneficiary of $5 million in back due taxes, and you're given an opportunity for Banyan Village to be treated like Port LaBelle 1 through 9 and Blades 102. I thank you for your time and consideration. I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. Yeah, it's I'll, been a long, painful trip. But discussion, I'll, commissioners. I've got a question, Mr. Yes. Chair. Um, so, Chuck, so you're asking us to vacate 400 lots. You paid 2.3 in the last two days. Um, <clears throat> You're roughly owing what 2.7 million left? I think it's probably a number of closer to 2.4, but okay. I think there's been a total, yes, sir, that, that's and you're, between 2.3 and 2.4. And you're willing to pay that by end of week? Yes, sir. You had mentioned 40 homes as far as being built. I'm, I want to clarify that because I've been out there quite a bit now. I know of 15 homes. I know that D.R. Horton's broken ground on 10 here recently. In Banyan in, Village. In Banyan Village. So I, I, I met with Chuck and I met with, is it Robert from D.R. Horton? And I asked him that question. You really think that with D.R. Horton's name, you can build a house in the middle of nowhere with nut grass growing through the roads? Because that's really what's going on with those roads out there. What are they, about an inch thick chain? I mean, those roads are bad. Just think about that. And nothing against you, Chuck. I understand. But you're kind of a nobody when it comes to a national company, right? These people ha ha are taking his vision. He's convinced them, uh, and, and I think you courted them for about a year and a half, two years, to get to this point. And they turned you down a few times. But just think about that. D.R. Horton's willing to build in Banyan Village. And we already know that through COVID, we've had internet <coughs> issues, right? This man's going to be able to bring fiber through, to the table. I've spoken to CenturyLink. I don't know if you know that, Chuck, but I called them on my own. And they have been working on it. And here just recently, uh, is it, you guys issued the permit for that fiber. So there's a hub already sitting there at the, I don't know, it's off Sycamore, and I don't know what the cross street is. There's a box there prepared to run that line from, is it 80 to that box? Is that the way you understand it, Shane? Man. Think about what meetings we sat in at Florida Association of Counties, and there's always a constant conversation about broadband. This beats broadband. I just, if, if there's anything that we can do, we need to entertain it. Um, 
you know, 2.3 million. Granted, it's money that he's owed, right? I mean, we don't deny that. Mm -hmm. But but would you want to put that money out on the table unless you knew that uh, you can run that football into the finish line? And I know that he's been through hard times, and I know that he's probably got not the best uh, record going back, but he's got some great talking points when you talk about the water issues of them having to pay for the water infrastructure to be out in Banyan Village. And if it was done when it was supposed to be done, that dollar amount would have been quite a bit less. So I don't know. I know it's worth a discussion to have. Um, if there's anything that we can do, Mark, do you see anything uh, that this board doesn't have the discretion of doing? No, I think you have that discretion. Hold on. <laughs> on the 400 lots, we did. It's your tag. You're the ones who filed for tax deed applications. You can decide to withdraw them and lose some money. What does but it cost us? Cost us the cost of the application plus interest on top of there. You'll lose. Yeah, she's got the exact words. You're going to lose your tax deed application fee or at least some of it. The title, see, a tax deed application fee has got three parts to it. It's got. Mark, I don't mean to cut you off, but i just like to add a couple other things that I want, I want to, you know, I want to say this is a big, this is a big request right now. I don't know, Commissioner Wills, Commissioner Bird, Commissioner Harris, how much conversation you've had with this gentleman, but nice to meet you. This is the first time I've ever seen you or heard your name in my life. Earlier today, I had an email in my inbox. Um, you know, I'm probably going to come across as contentious, but you, you made a comment that you haven't been able to build out there. No one's been able to build. There's been one house out there for X number of years. Was that not stated? That, is that entirely? I mean, I, I guess we're splitting hairs here, but I think there's like seven or eight. Is there really only one home? Yeah. Really only one home? 10 through 13. Yeah. Is Banyan Village not between Lexington and Wellington? Yeah. It is. Okay. All right. I thought there was a couple more that I saw. You said that, you said that the person that owns said lot is legally not allowed to build. They could not get a permit issued from the county. Is if you took two individual lots, which is not what people bought or signed up for, and you combine them to make them a half an acre, then you could. But post 1972. So essentially, the developer in their design of the plat didn't design it correctly to be able to have a buildable lot. Is that what you're stating? No, their intent when they designed it, they designed it correctly. It's the same way it's designed in units one through nine in Glades 102. It's identical. Uh huh. It's a mirror image. The only difference was one through nine got water. Village didn't. Well, you didn't have, years. yeah, and there was no power either. And there's still no power today. Yeah. So let's say a person buys a lot today and says, "Please bring me power." If they have to bring that power <coughs> amount, it might be ten thousand dollars. You're buying three thousand a lot, and power them with ten thousand dollars. So the only way utilities work, and I think Shane could probably help us out here. I think the only the only way it really works is the utility has to get an ROI, just like everybody else. Absolutely, so but but when you bring, I understand they need a volume to get a, a ROI. But they, the, they need a group to cluster. Understood. They can't do one here, one there, and one there. But what I would say, I mean, I, the challenge I would have to that is that there's there's people living in rural America all the time. I guess you know they're they're rolling a bigger gamble that they're not going to own a tremendous amount of land. But I, 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 is it not a play on words to say it was illegal? I don't think illegal is the correct way. It was just it was not it was cost prohibitive for you to build a house. Illegal. You could not, and Mr. Lapkin uh, can chime in here because actually 16 years ago he was part of this march to help get the water out there per the utility agreement that the county signed. Uh -huh. Because the utility agreement said each and every lot will get water. You will not discriminate. Time is of the essence. So okay. That's the whole premise of the big problem. That happened in 2005? No, that happened in, in the 90s when, when GDC went to belly up. I think the... The uh, Henry County took over in 1996, 1997, and they had four phases. Phase one was to increase the water plant, which you guys did on time, on schedule. Phase two was to bring out water to all of the lots in one through nine. You did it on time, on schedule. Mm -hmm. Phase three was to bring it out to Glades 102 on time, on schedule. Phase four was to bring it to Banyan Village. It, okay. got, it got paused. And it was a political hot thing where we, we don't want or 
we shouldn't have homes out there, it's too far to service, it's, we have plenty of lots here, but the problem is, it wasn't really a right of the board, in my humble opinion, to make that decision, because it was a right that that person bought when they had that lot sold. Because that person didn't have water, he couldn't go pull a permit to build. And plain and simple, illegal. And so you were not gonna get a permit issued to you until you have portable water. Portable water came there and went away. So sir, with all due respect, it wasn't a, the, a design flaw by the developer. It was part of the plan was to bring water and the water didn't get there. So, so how does someone build a lot in Pioneer 10 miles to the back country off of 80. Different subdivision, different rules, and if you were prior to 1972, your grandfather did, you didn't have the same rules, see? As you went along, the environmentalists changed and make the rules tougher and tougher and tougher. So you could not poke a hole in the ground, go hire Crumbs well drilling, and drill on a lot in Banyan Village and have potable water? If you had, if you had sewer, you could. You can't have sewer and water and anything less than half an acre because of the, the contamination. Okay. But if you had power 1972, it was the rules, the wild, wild west. Okay. You could plug and do wherever you want. Yeah. I own land today, 200 lots in Lake Placid. Okay. And that has quarter acre lots. It's the same as this. And you could do it there because it was prior to 1972. So it's just semantics with the state. The bigger brother said, from this time going forward, unless you have at least a half an acre, you can't have sewer and, and, and a well on the same lot. If you put a well in, though, you wouldn't have electricity to run it. That's right. But prior, prior, let's, let's, let's forget the priors. 2008, we got water out there. Yes, sir. And there's still been no building. And we're 2021. Yes, sir. So, I, I, you know, again, since 2008, they could pull a permit, they could build. Yes, sir. And if they would want a power, they'd have brought power to them. I, granted, it's so much per pole, per so many feet, I get it. I've, I've seen it out in Wheeler Estates and other places as well. But to say since 2008 you could not build there is not correct. No, I didn't say since 2008 you could. That's right. But the problem is it's cost prohibitive. So right that's now, exactly what the commissioner said a while ago. Right. Well, I think we were talking about initially, he said it was a design flaw that it did. Just well, I just think we're saying, oh, woe is me. It's, it's someone else's fault. That I don't know who the heck the other someone is, okay, that you, you can buy a lot out here, but we've been treated unfairly and we can't we can't build or develop. Now, I don't think that's a, an actually so I'd correct like to, statement. I'd like to backpedal on that. And okay. And readdress that. Okay. Forget CHO. Okay. Say we're not in any. 2,800 other lot owners bought one, one lot at a time. Okay. Of, of the, the 3,800, 2,800 yes, individual owners are out there. That's right. Okay. So Hero Reeser, big, big pillar of this community, and we used to work with him with Habitat, Humanity, et cetera, et cetera. He was an advocate and sat on a plus board for 10 years, ringing that bell, water, 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 water. And probably Mr. Harris and Mr. Lapp and a few other people that have been around for a long time that were part of that issue or whatever. And that had nothing to do with CHL. Mm -hmm. It has the rights and the individual. So I'm not here to sing for his name. Okay. I'm saying we can improve the community. We have a chance now that we have a national builder. We have the power problem fixed. We got fiber fixed. All systems go. There, nobody's nobody's claiming victim here. Nobody's claiming whose fault, not fault. What we're saying is here's an opportunity. All the parts, all the stars finally aligned. The infrastructure is coming into play, yes, and we have a builder that wants to develop. Not one builder, lots of builders, but six of them already committed. And I wanted to address that, Mr. Glazer said. So to give you an idea of, of what the absorption rate is right now and what's going to happen come here next three months if this is supported by the board tonight, DR Horton already closed on 10. When they close on land, they don't land bank land. They go right to building permits and right to building. They're closing 10 more this month, subject to tonight's meeting. So they're in for 20. Coastal has 10. They're in permitting for it. There's 30. Blue Line Construction, one of your locals here, Howard Anderson is name, has two at Tybee. He's a little builder, and he's got four going on in Glade 1 and 2, but he's got three more in permitting. CHL built three. We're at rooftops on them. The tin roofs are on there. There's another group out of Tampa that closes this month to, to start nine. So in that little section that we're talking about, which is east of Lexington, south of Sycamore, north of Wake, a little condensed area, which might be 20% of Unit 12, there's 50 bills going, or 50 bills potentially going. Contingent on two things. Blaze Electric delivers the power, and they said they would do it if we cluster them, which this is what the utility companies need. When they bring 
X amount of power poles, like you said, Mr. Wills. If they can get 15 users sucking off of it, they get a it's cost effective for them because they get an ROI. The fiber company is the same way. The fiber company is not going to bring you FTC, FTH, and do one home over there, one home over there. And they're, in fact, once they build phase one, they're not going to phase two until we get in 30 or 40 rooftops. But we check all those boxes. And, and if I came across tonight in any way, pours us and humbles us, that's not my intention. My intention tonight was to show you that I think for the first time, everything that's needed for, on behalf of the county, on behalf of the taxpayer, on behalf of the people, it's all there and it's all lined up. I think everybody wins. I, I'm open to hear anybody have anything, criticism that says how this isn't good. The county's going to get $5 million more money than you didn't have two weeks ago. Fiber build's going to get built that you'll never take back out of the ground once it's there. And as I was explained to Miss Davis last week, if we build 20 houses out there and it doesn't work out, nobody's going to pull up a truck up there two weeks from now or two months from now and start taking that house down and relocate it someplace else. It'll be there forever. So if you get the power there forever, you get the fiber there forever, the water is there, you're paying for it, you're maintaining it, you're using it, you might as well get the utility out and get people paying to, to, to utilize it. It's a no-brainer in my mind. Maybe I see things through different glasses or different lenses, but it seems like a, like a layup. So what you're actually asking for is, um, I, I apologize, your last name, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's fine. Yeah. That's great. Um, Thank you. The, uh, what you're asking for is a year. Yes, sir. And that's what you're asking for. But so here's one thing that's important. A thousand lot owners, right, a thousand other applicants got the pass from you guys because they didn't get tax deed application pulled up. And you're not talking about giving up all the tax dollars. Mm -hmm. You're talking about getting seven instead of eight. So your small increment, you're getting five million, and the, the cost differential, and I'm sure Jennifer will, will provide the number to you, <coughs> it's going to be 200 or 250,000. You're getting three and a half million dollar bill and five million dollars in cash, and you get the committed to the to new tax rules on there. I don't really understand, and I, and I know I hear the argument loud and clear: the county's losing money. Really? No, 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 no. I'm 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 saying I think the county is potentially losing money. Okay. Here's and let me tell you one other thing too. Yes, sir. I do feel that the number one thing, other than setting policy for the county, is is infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. That's what our job is to do. And so, you know, I'm not. If you, if you said right now, this moment, I'm not saying I'm going to be here 15 minutes from now or five minutes from now. Right now at this moment, I don't have enough information because everything that you're saying sounds great, right? We have a national builder that's wanting to come in. They have rooftops going. We supposedly have one a month or equivalency of 12, but it could be 50 rooftops coming in. You know, th th these are great things. Ten a month. Sir. Ten a month. That's awesome. 120 homes in one year. From one building, you have six. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's bigger than nine. Yes, absolutely. And and I I would understand from you as well that they're not gonna they're not gonna do a sporadic. You know, we're gonna buy a lot over here, buy a lot over there, buy a lot. Of, you know, they see okay, we can we can have warranty deeds that are gonna stand any challenge. We can come in and we can start going vertical with a site built home. That's awesome. You know, we're not talking about putting a new trailer park somewhere on a cow pasture. That's phenomenal, right? The county obviously has spent, I mean, it's fair to say we spent tens of millions of dollars bringing infrastructure out there. I don't know. Not, it, Probably about $9 million the line. $9, million. $9 million. I know this. Kevin McCarthy beat his chest. It was a successful thing, and I think a couple of his colleagues wanted to stab him because they were bitter about the fact that, that we had spent that kind of money out there. Now, that it's just two, me reading the room as I'm sitting there that running was 2008, for 2008, right? Yes, ma'am. But that was assessed to the uh, taxpayers, wasn't it? Mm. Taxpayers and the payment. Yeah. And so the point I'm making is we have infrastructure in the ground. It's not being utilized today. Obviously, that's not going back to Port LaBelle Utility System, but it was paid for via the taxpayers. Now, I don't know what we have in writing from you that guarantees all of these promises from Dr. Horton, and I don't know if we can even put anything in writing. But, but, you know, to say I want to hit the pause button is probably too aggressive. What I would love to see is between now and the next two weeks, I'm a huge fan of PowerPoints, and a picture is worth a thousand words. For you to be able to prepare something for us to be able to truly see a more clear picture of what we're talking about, what, what it looks like today, and then generate what those dollars and cents are actually going to, to be to us, Along with showing us, you know, what what the numbers are that we're potentially forfeiting, and then how that plays out. I mean, 
I hear you saying they're kind of sitting in they're sitting in a room right now saying, hey, if this will if this goes well tonight, we're ready to ink X number of more construction, right? That, that ship has left the left the harbor. Okay. The homes that there's 15, as Mr. Glacius pointed out, already done. You, you're getting those whether you like them or not. All right. So, so they're work in progress. All right. They're ready to commit to 10 more as long as they don't think the fiber build's going to get interrupted. Okay. Our contract with CHL with the fiber is for the 1,300 lots. Okay. No 1,300 lots, no fiber. Okay. No fiber, they abort. But I do want to make it very clear. I, that's why I had it set up separately. Jennifer and I have been crunching all kinds of numbers and we've been ha passing these things off. We had D.R. Horton meet with independently with, with, the, with the commissioner. These aren't my numbers and my projections. I'm not here in a soapbox to sell you anything that you, if you do this and this and this is going to happen. It's here. The opportunity is here. We just don't want it derailed. And, and the opportunity is good for the people, not just for CHL, not just for the county, but the 2,800 people that bought into a dream in the 70s and have never been able to be fulfilled. You're going to have power out there for the first time. You're going to have homes out there. I, that, even if it's 50 homes, right, times a quarter million dollars, what is that? A quick math, boom, 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 twelve and a half million dollars. Twelve and a half million dollars, new on your tax roll, times five thousand dollars, you know, per house, times 50, it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. There is no downside, you know. The other thousand, so if you want to speak fairness, right, you want to speak what's good for the goose is good for the gander, or the equal access to the other. These other thousand already got a pass, and, and they didn't do it. And in no other place in the county did you do this. You put it on the table to, to take that taxi application to try and get a block back to passes, yeah. taxes paid up. You won. You got it. You got it happen. 4,000 tax bills got paid in the last two days. Yep. We're going to give another one. If they don't, they're going to go away, and you're going to have that opportunity. So you're talking about one tax bill out of eight that that's up for conversation tonight when you're talking about $12 million of new product, the $3.5 million project build, and all these homes that are work, work in progress coming out. And Shane can provide, or, or the utility can tell you about how many driveway permits are being taken and how many permits are coming up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The wave is here, but without, without the utility companies getting the grouping, power won't happen and the fiber won't happen. And I think that is forget CHL and, and forget you know a few a, a few bucks compared to the comparison of the windfall that you're getting. It's a travesty, I think, to, to the county and to the taxpayer. Because again, forty million dollars has been collected by the county for forty-eight years. When is when does the payback come? When when does the person that paid that money for forty-eight years get an opportunity to, to have build a house like they did once or nine? And I'm here to tell you, I'm very adamant about this. 2,800 homes over here and none over here. There's something wrong with that picture. And a simple equation that, that equals the teeter-totter is the infrastructure. And you say you're all about infrastructure, it's right here on your plate. And I, I don't know how to be more straightforward than that. And so, more direct than that. Anyway, Chuck, yes, you're sir. asking for 400 for one more year. Well, the 400 is not even CHL. I shouldn't even speak that. I'm just okay. trying to treat everybody the same. Seven okay. of those are individuals. Okay. So we only had 330. We already paid off about 30 of them. So you're talking about 300. I'm asking for a stay of one year to withdraw your motion that you made in April and see how it plays out for you. So you got five million dollars as reward in the fire. I'm sorry. Mr. So Mr. what Mr. happens if this don't happen? Then you'd make taxi application six months from now, and you go after the the 1600 lots. Then you I lose. Assure you, you lose a year. I can assure you, Mr. Commissioner. If we're putting in $5 million, and we're not putting in anymore. I mean, this is enough yeah. of a risk and nothing. Well, if we put in that $5 million, guess what? In two more months that I get, I get another $600,000 of tax bills for Banyan Village, which has just grown weeds for the last 48 years. Well, I, I've heard of Banyan Village ever since I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and all it, is, all it was was a bunch of trees, nothing there. And I'm tired of, if we can work this out, I think it's best for the county. Because so far we haven't received we've received one house. So to be clear, Mr. Chair, to be clear, you're willing to pay five million by the end of the week. <clears throat> that represents everything that you owe the county. That's no back due taxes. That's two months from now, then you'll get your two, uh, 2021, 22 taxes. But he will be current. Is that right? The way you understand it, Jennifer? Is that so? You're saying that you'll 
catch up all your back taxes within a week. And in good faith, that's why I brought to you $2.4 million. We talked about this. So he's no longer behind. I told you when I met with you a month, month and a half ago that I could muster between $1 million and $1.5 million. I went and took loans against other property I have. I broke my own retirement. And in good faith, before this meeting, I paid to be able to say, this isn't rhetoric, this isn't conversation. $2.4 million got put into those coffers for Bandon Village and I'm willing to commit to the others. If you think if I put that money in, I'm going to let it fail? I'm going to sit there and put a coal miner cap on at nighttime at midnight if I have to to protect my investment. 18 years I invested in to try and make this happen. Not just for me, all the lot owners like Harold Risser, an advocate for all the people that can't be here today because they only own one lot. They've given up. We haven't given up. And I think we've done a really good job <coughs> patting ourselves on the back. I think we have a great coalition of six builders, not just one. The permits are in the ground. There's nothing that you can bring up, excuse me, there's nothing that you can bring up today that's speculation. It's here. It's real. The permits are pulled. Mr. Mr. Uh, Shane's group has already put water meters out there for 15 lots going out there. So it's not speculation. Just let's not derail it. 15 site built homes is is already has water water meters installed. I'm going to swear to them, but I know they put an application. They pulled permits. That's all you gotta say, yes or no. They pulled permits. I mean this is this is a different conversation, you know. And I you know if, if I don't see I'm trying to understand uh, how granting one more year or not tonight, you know, in a 14-day span, just so I could be able to wrap my brain around it. But I'll just tell you this. I mean, the fact that you, you stroked a check to make X number of years of back taxes good so that, so that you can move it forward, you know, with your builders, That's I think that speaks volumes. It's the future of Banyan Village. Well, I haven't met you before today either. Um, and when, when I read the email today, actually, I did the same thing. I started making phone calls because I, I was not aware of everything going on. Uh, and speaking to one of the builders, actually two of the builders today I spoke to, and and they're they're waiting. Well, they told me they're ready. Um, it's, uh, I, I just, like I said, never met you before. So I called them myself. Actually, one of them I spoke to on the way over said, hey, you know, what's going on? Where are you at? I said, we're just waiting. We're ready. The exact words were, we're ready to 10. 10 to 20 homes regularly. They weren't going to come in with one home here, one home there. Their exact words were, we're ready. We've already scraped 10 lots was the exact words they told me. We've scraped 10 lots. We're ready. Those are DRs. Yes. So that's, I mean. Post 10 more with me by the end of the month. And, and let me just teach you one, or share with you one thing about DR Horton. They don't buy land on speculation and say, oh, let's see how it works out and build this out and the other. They won't close on a lot with me until they do two things. They survey it and they pull permits. And when the permits are ready, when you go through the utility department and see the name, the lot's still in CHL Holdings name. They get the permit, and when they get the permit, then they close in the next day to scrape lots. And what they want to do is put into rotation right now. They've already proven themselves. I brought them in here about a year ago. They've already built you 90 homes in one through nine. He's ready, and the appetite, because right now the, the lots in, in one through nine are 22 to $25,000. There's a big disparity and two or three thousand or four thousand dollars lots. Wouldn't it be nice to have this conversation when we're here one year from now and say the Bandian Village lots are now worth twenty thousand dollars? That be, cures all your problems. Be pretty phenomenal. There will not be one person that one tax deed certificate available, and the builders will come running once they realize that all these people are committed. And there's not one building to serve, with all due respect, there's six. And they have paid their permit fees, they've done their things. The permit boxes are DR Horton are up there, just like Mr. Wills verified himself. Mr. Vasquez met with them straight. We have three rooftops right now with 10 roofs. Um, Mr. Anderson, Blue Line Things, has two at Tybee. He was supposed to have trusses two two weeks ago, and now they're not coming until the end of August. But he's two and committed, already sold one for $248,000. Cash ready to go. It's here, and it's ready, and, and you will be huge beneficiaries, not only for every taxpayer, because there will be value, that these people will gladly pay their taxes as they'll finally see a future after 48 years. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's nice to meet you also. I, too, did, was not aware of everything that's going on. Ms. Ms. Um, Davis, what will we lose within that year? So 400 lots at an average just given by the tax collector for one year would be $301,000. That would be the 2013 taxes that are 
fallen off. Um, in addition, we <coughs> came up with the, the application fees because we've already paid for the application fees. Um, and it would be somewhere, because we're not sure about $75 of the totals, two seventy-five dollars per lot, somewhere between fifty-four dollars and $84,000. Those are costs that we had to pay the, the application fees. So a little shy of a half a million dollars. Correct. Okay. 380. And, and 355, Jack, again, you said that brings you current. 355, correct. worst case scenario, <clears throat> on 400 lots. And I might add on that that those numbers are not even the correct numbers. They're, they're correct starting out if you multiply them, but we've already paid off 20 or 30 of those because D.R. Horton's lots were in there and had to pay. So I'm guessing, don't hold me to it, but 20 or 30 of those lots, we paid that additional year and paid the five That is correct. So this is the whole 400. Okay. That's I'd correct. say that number is closer to so they, the middle 200. So they really just did, they do the diligence part. that they were supposed yeah. to do, basically. That's oh, what. Mr. Chair? Yes, yeah, sir. Um, I don't want to be. I don't want to be the uh, reason why we don't allow these entities to move forward with everything. Um, I'd say you know I'm very close to being there and all in. Um, obviously, if, if you've made X number of tax certificates, you've 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 taken care of those that were in arrears, you know, and you're committing to us to to do to do X number more within the next seven to fourteen days. I mean that I think that speaks in volume as well. I'll make a motion as a contingent that if you pay your taxes by Wednesday of next week and catch us all current, I'll make a motion to um, vacate the 400 lots at Alden Banyan Village that we put up for tax deed. I second the motion. Discussion. Tell me why it's not as easy as saying, you, you know, you're going to forfeit, let's just call it a half a million dollars, but in him bringing x to the table and create I mean, it's, tax base. it's a wash is it not yeah. it's way plus to a wash and then we're also allowing these other contractors to come in and start going vertical with rooftops okay um what is our responsibility in banyan village today as it relates to infrastructure water our being the county well, the water's there. Yeah, some the roads. roads it's already That's, there let me tell you what i'm driving at specifically so so in some areas in Henry County, a person puts in X number of mobile homes. They put in a road that's this thick, and then they, they say, okay, we're done. We did all this, and Henry County, we want you to take care of that from now until eternity. We've also had some places where I know, you know, Commissioner Harris brought some roads that we had to mow, some roads that we had to start maintenancing, things like that. That stuff makes my head hurt whenever we do that because I don't know how we do that in certain areas and then we don't do it in others. So as Banyan Village is starting to grow here, the you know we have we have our um, we have a low volume entity that we're dealing with right now out there and we have roads that are that are clearly you know dilapidated. Who is that gonna be our responsibility moving forward? Obviously it's gonna be generating a tax base but are, are we looking at a situation where that's that's all in the county, and then what are we what are we responsible for today from a level of service of bringing that up to the roads that are out there, two main dating entities. The county maintains the main roads: Lexington, Wellington, Banyan, Sycamore, and I think Hyacinth's the other one. The rest of them are all Portland Bell CDD roads. So if you're a lot owner out there, you pay. Funds you paid, um, I know that's the millage. You paid to the Portland Bell CDD just like you did if you lived in Portland Bell proper. Yes, sir. And they maintain those roads. Okay. But there's no lots except for large tracks that are on our road. Okay. All the lots, all the driveway permits, those are all going to the Portland Bell CDD. Is that due to KK? Yeah. KK. Then we maintain, we mow our roadways. That's it. We just mow our roadway. We actually pay Port the Bell CDD to, may, to mow our roadways out there. When they're mowing their roads, they mow ours. So you don't have to mobilize and go out there. You just give them a flat exactly. fee. Exactly. Okay. They're going right by us. All right. Go right. Um, as we move vertical, as we move forward with lights, that'll be a separate lighting district that gets set up. They have separate the MSBU. Does, the Port the Bell CDD does it. It'll okay. be a lighting MSBU. All right. They've got mosquitoes out there. We did a mosquito control MSBU for certain <clears> sections. 
we've got Fort LaBelle takes care of the water. One day it'll be sewer, but right now we got water out there, and that's really it. Yeah, land for 75 acre park too. Why in a school? Is isn't there a school site as well? Probably. Yeah. Why is there Shane? Why is there not sewer brought there today? Because there's only one hole there, and there's you put that capital expense. You have to have some customers to help pay for it. And right now, the largest um, need is in Fort Bell proper. Okay. And so we've got a phasing plan based on the current build out for units one through nine, where to put the sewer at. Shane, I've said this before, and we'll say it again. C43B map, basin management action plan. We're sitting right in the middle of it. We we need to look at the volume of units that we have. We need to use a, a, a entity like this coming online. We need to use that. We need to help tell our story. And it can't be an economic development story. It has to be we love bunnies, and we're not putting as much poop in the Caloosahatchee River, Okay. And when we do that, we're going to get money from the state to be able to put sewage in, sewer line in the ground. But we, we've, we've got to get dialed in on that. And I don't know if Dan's still on, on the contract with us, but we need to hammer on him and to help us. And we've done some applications recently for Good. Port LaBelle specifically Good. to... What, what to percentage of Port LaBelle's uh, sewer now? About... Unit 4. Unit 4. Sewer and then phase we show next requiring sewer will be unit one, one or two. Miss Bird, when they say unit one or two or 102 Glade and this, that, and the other, you know what they're talking about? <laughs> All right. Can we have, can we have in the month of, this is August, September, can we have, our first meeting in September will be budget heavy. Well, the second one will just be a hearing, but no major presentation via budget, right? Well, they're both. They're both? Mm -hmm. And they're both moved, aren't they? Because we got to cater to the school board in their night. We don't have to move this year. We don't have to move this year. Do y'all think it's too much? I want to have a presentation. I want to see them from from a GIS map. What we have today, I want to be able to. I want to be able to see it, you know, from a bird's eye view. And then I want to keep moving right on west out to uh, County Line. You know, I want an update on Sears Road, on getting our, or excuse me, Wheeler, Wheeler Road Estates, on where we're at on that. And I just think it would be a nice little infrastructure overview. When we get done with that, I want to move right in to Pioneer and go east all the way to Montura. And then when we get done with that, I want to go east of Montura all the way to the Palm Beach County line and look at our infrastructure there. But I don't think we're all on the same page with what we know we have <coughs> responsibility for, so on and so forth. So, you know, three presentations between now and December, or between end of September and December, that is, you know, 10 PowerPoint slides or less, a good 15-minute presentation by you, and then let us have questions if we have them. Because I'd, I'd love to be dialed in a lot better about what you're talking about. I've written all over it. Um, I've, I've asked people from Miami Dade to please not destroy the roads as much as I can. Um, it's they've, getting better. They've told me to go to hell <laughs> in multiple languages. It's getting better than that. My dad and there were they're shooting their rifles because they're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we're you know. working with uh, Sheriff Wood. We're talking about putting cameras that will dial right in the SCO and donating that uh, on Lexington and Wellington. Oh, so you that's going in there right now. You're a, it's you're a big brother guy, huh? You're gonna are you gonna also promote mask wearing and tell us that if we don't wear a mask when that camera sees it, we're gonna get a ticket. Oh God. All right. Anyway, back to so, D.L. Horton, I talked to them. They're one of the biggest builders in the state. The and fiber's the clincher for them. So we have a motion and a second. Did we act on it? Do we have a motion by Commissioner Glacier, second by Commissioner Harris? No, we were in discussion still. With okay. conditions. With conditions. Uh, he, about he, Wednesday. The, he made the conditions he, he, in the, the motion. Pay it by Friday, so I'll feel better, but I'm giving you till Wednesday. Sorry. So is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Do, do we need to put that time frame? I mean, it, it, you've paid 2.5 in X number of days. I'm not trying to get into your cash flow situation, but. He's prepared. Okay. All right. He's got it in his back pocket. Phenomenal. <laughs> Somebody needs to knock him in the head. Here's the sidewalk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Um, old business. Huh? Business by district? Yeah, business by district. Uh, Jennifer, last meeting I'd come up with an idea afterwards. I was 
wanted to follow up. So we got $4.6 in the disaster fund, and my thought was to pay off the line of credit, and then should we have a disaster, let's pull from the line of credit to fund that disaster fund, let's save money on the interest on the uh, line what of credit. What is the interest? It's, it's, it's over 6%, isn't it? I don't know. What's the total, what's the total than... juice on our line of credit? Not the juice. What's the total? It's $6 million. No, no, no. But I'm saying what do we have it? The what are interest. we utilizing it right now? Well, with the jail project, it's it took up the <coughs> remaining balance. So we're going to have to pay in draws, and they haven't got started yet, but it will eat up the Those, entire $6 million of the line of credit. Uh, repeat that again. So my thought was... <laughs> <laughs> You like that idea? No. No? Go so I want to take the $4.6 that we have in the disaster fund, pay off the line of credit or pay towards it, save the interest. Disaster comes, we pull from the line of credit. We don't borrow any more past what we've, we've paid off on the disaster fund and then refund the disaster fund. I don't know what is on the LOC right now. So, so I haven't talked to the bank since the last meeting. Um, he mentioned it after. Sorry after, to put you on the spot. That's okay. But. After the last meeting, but my initial reaction is we'd have to talk to the bank because right now the line of credit is specifically for facility improvements. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it would have to be restructured. It's not for paying off loans. So let's look and but see it, if we can do it. No, no. But if it's a hurricane and it destroys, I mean, here, here, I guess what I'm saying is not no immediately. I want to know what we would be saving on the juice. And and then and then what our total expense is on the line of credit? What what do we have the line of credit being utilized for in its entirety right now? But you'd have to redo it. And if you could make that maybe just at least a quarterly update, or just something that goes into our board book at least once a month, so that we can see where we're at, what interest has accrued, and so on and so forth. I'd like to I'd like to know that because mm. because the jail's not getting started. The jail's not getting started. It's it's. I mean, they're going to make draws, but the jail. What was the GM, what was the ghost guaranteed maximum price? Oh, 3.6. Almost 3.5 million. 3.5. In the line of credit, it's five. Six. 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 So it's had over half. Oh. Uh, okay, it's over half. That still leaves two million that I want to know about. So that so that is two that was eight. that was for the courthouse improvements. Uh -huh. We've got the cemetery improvements. We've had um, sure. some office. other jail. Um, repairs that we, we haven't had done anything to, do. to the sub office in Clouston yet. Not yet, no. It's on the docket. No. But it, it's on the docket. It's not using the line of credit right now. No. 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 So, that, I mean, it's not. He's saying it's still going to go. So, in right September, when we get the final ruling. Well, we had a list that was this long. We wanted to redo a parking lot. I mean, we wanted to do some asinine stuff that I think we've removed. And I haven't ever had a heart attack about it because we haven't <laughs> said we're going to make this stupid decision, in case you wonder what I think about some of them. But we're holding off on all of those. But whenever the time comes, we need to have that discussion as a board and say, no, we don't need to build a $40 million jail and tear down the old one and put a new parking lot over there because it's asinine. So, you know, I, I, I'm excited about knowing what's on the line of credit and what's out there. So we'll, we'll send that update. I will talk to the bank, see about what that might look like as far as restructuring because that would be, have to be the first step to see. And then we'll do a, a savings on the interest. Because right now it's interest only. Yeah, and you, we don't know how much we're going to spend either. Well, He's, with the... We might not have enough money. You said interest heavy, right? No. We don't know how much we're going to spend on what? Wait, I, I'm, on I, her sheet. Well, we're going to, for what we've already spent, over $2 million, and for what the jail cost that we know and what we know is still pending on the cemetery because that was over half that was a half a million dollars that you all have approved it came before you um we know when you do the math that it's going to equal more than little more than the six million dollars so when the rescue money comes okay and so we plan on and that's where that was in shane's staff report when you approved the jail um, that the difference of the jail project, any, any deficit, if you will, on the balance of the credit line would come out of those dollars. But the jail is, it's not a, it's, it's an 18 month or how, it may be a 36 month long project. It's a little over a year and we're, we're going to be paying as we go. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're not spending right. 3.5 now. We're doing a price. Yeah. I mean, all we got into it now with Chris Hill was $20,000. Utilizing them and getting them started. Well, again, the biggest question is going to be if we're even able to do that and draw those funds for disaster rather than if, if it's already structured for, for buildings 
we need to make sure we can actually pull that money out in case of disaster. So that's something that you have to look at that and see. I think it's a great discussion, Commissioner. Yeah. Davis. Right now, I'm leaning towards no, but I still I think this also forces us to to take a deeper dive into looking at what we're going to do with what money we have available. I I will say this: if there's one thing Miss Butler instilled on me, and Coach Clark have just beat into me is Please allow us to have cash on hand, you know. And, you know, I think we're doing an amazing job of it looks like we're not going to raise the millage this year. You know, we're potentially going to lower it. We're not going to maybe get back to that rollback, but we're going to be mighty close. And so in doing that, we're still going to generate some revenue. So, you know, I think that's a step in the right direction. And the fact that we've done what you've told us time and time again, which is get as close as we can to paying about that $6.5 million, you know, I think that's something that's to, to celebrate. So. We'll be there by next year. Mr. Bird? I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Harris? Uh, we've already talked about it a little bit, but I, I ride from Port LaBelle probably one or two times a week or something, and I don't think we'll ever have enough money. You've already talked to Judy about it. I don't think we'll ever have enough money to fix those roads because every one of them's got weeds growing up in them. And their their roads are not ours. And uh, another thing, Margaret or whoever, all those dump trucks coming in, and all those houses, they're tearing their when they pull in, they're tearing the road all apart because it's only that thick. Do y'all check that when you check the house? Well, who's who's somebody's supposed to check it? Is that you, you Shane? <laughs> okay, so on the, on the Port Bell CDD roads, the building those houses, they get a right away permit from the Port Bell CDD. So the Port Bell CDD should be checking that out for the right away permit process. So when the dump truck goes in, he breaks off three feet and it's laying in the ditch. They've got to check it and make them redo it. At the, well, that's Port Bell CDD. I mean, that dump truck's going in to get that container and go off service in that house that's all within the length of that property so they're supposed to restore the right of way back and make everything correct so that would that should be included with the Portland LCD program. well that'd be a full-time job for somebody to go out there and check that that's just part of that's part of construction and right of way permit we do it at the county so that's not you it's not me okay Jennifer okay that's Mr. Judy. Commissioner's not here Jennifer is there any way we can put uh tags, uh, labels on the coal trucks, because only one of them, I believe, have them. So when they ride out in the community, the people know who they are. Okay. I think it's to protect them. <laughs> no, it, 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 it makes a difference. Okay. Uh, yeah. Commissioner Turner, you're up. Uh, this is my district. Yes, um, sir. Shane, obviously, we got a lot of thunderstorms. Uh, we got a lot of water jump and a lot of places very short amount of time um i'm fairly confident that uh, your road and bridge guys are getting out there and and you know looking at everything proactively as best as we can um you know about the the constituents in the corner there in ladika which is already a low spot you and i had a good conversation about that i uh, went out there and looked at that a couple different times it's going down um i don't think that that's anything more than mother nature just hammered us in one little spot and it's a low lying area um <coughs> I think it's a good conversation that you have with Clear Lake and the Bethencourt family. Um, could we look at those areas that are in East Henry County Jane's District's concern or our custody, if you will, and look at what we can do while they've already cleaned up that one portion there that is adjacent to Old 27. If we could continue to work westerly on Old 27 on the south side of Old 27, so just take what they've already cleaned out and make it as gorgeous or as close as we could, continuing all the way to Evercane Road. I think it would be money well spent. Um, if That is East Henry County Drainage District Road, right? Excuse me. Old US 27 is the county road. And then that large canal you see on the south <coughs> side, that's actually on private property. So south side is U.S. Sugar? South side past Mr. Benport is U.S. Sugar. Okay. Could we have a nice conversation, and if you want me to start the ball, I will, but could we have a conversation with them about making that look good in there 
and just you know being proactive. If they want to, if they want to say, hey, you know what, we like it, but we want to wait until it dries up. I'm all about that. But I just think you know we have a, a golden opportunity there to make that all flow a little bit better. What about on the north side? That's all private as well. That should all be yours. Okay. All right. North of the road, west of our Lawrence. Yes, sir. When you get to the east, there's. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, if y'all can just go through there and look, and I don't, you know, I obviously it sounds like I'm asking for us to be messing with private property, which we can't do. But if y'all see, you know, some large tractor trailer tires and stuff like that, if we could just get an all call to them to to talk to them about maybe helping us out with that, because you know it just takes one garbage can or one tire to flow up the whole system. And then um, I don't know if y'all been down there on Rogers Road uh, and some of the other areas on 835, if that's been cleaned up. Um, I, I know we have, but I know it's been hammered again. Twice, yeah. It's going to be an ongoing. It thing. is. We'll go back and pick up trash. Shane, you know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I really think we need to speed up that conversation with talking with our sheriff. You know, we need to have utopia. We need to have four of those that look like light towers but they have a camera on them it's disgusting that we're having this conversation they have a camera on them and so if we have a festival we have swamp cabbage we could put them in labelle and and our crowds are watched right so that in the event we have a horrible thing sugar festival same thing happens so on and so forth we get where they're going right we utilize them we justify their existence all the time but then when we have a hot spot like this that is repeatedly being hammered by, by bad actors and the problem, the, the thing that drives you the most batty is 90% of the stuff they're throwing out, it would get picked up if they just put it on the curbside or put it in their garbage can. But people are so asinine that they, you know, they'll go the extra mile or miles as it relates in this particular instance and illegally dump stuff, you know, and it's just, it's terrible. So, you know, I, I'd love to know what those things cost and if we could do it. And then, you know, the other thing too is just the speeders. Um, you know, if we could have, if we could look at helping the sheriff's department to buy a couple more of those that light up with the blue light, they put the fear of Jesus in you whenever you see them, but they slow you down. So that's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, sir. I really uh, just want to thank uh, engineering. You guys have done a lot of work in the district since these guys are, you know, talking about all of the drainage is really, really looking good. It is. The roads are really looking good. You guys have done a lot. And I just, you know, it, a lot of times you get complaints and you never get the appreciation. Um, so just make sure you pass it down through there. Um, a lot, lot of good to say about Tommy, but I'm not going to do it while he's sitting here. Uh, so I'm just thank, thankful for everything that's going on. Um, again, our workers are really, really getting stretched. Uh, we're in the same boat. We're getting a lot of complaints, you know, about the mowing, about the you know, ditches and different stuff. But the fact is, we're having the same problem getting employees that everyone else is having as well. Yeah. Um, so just make sure you pass it on to everyone in your departments that you know it's, it's not missed. Uh, we understand that we understand the battles and we appreciate the work so our staff makes us look good thank you well we, the thing is we just need to keep equipping them we need to make sure what they need they have uh you know we was talking earlier about equipment and uh, a couple backhoes are down graders down and they, if they don't have the equipment they can't do the work so we got to make sure that we're, we're putting the tools in their hands they need to keep going so that's really all i have i just want to say thank you and Keep working. Mr. Anybody? Chair, we have two backhoes and a grader that are down right now. Well, and we're missing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've been after a, I've been after a track Should I not have said that? <laughs> for a year, I've been after a track over, so and it's... Yeah, one track is messed up right now. We've yeah. got a motor grader that's been acting up that we're fixing in-house. We went and ran the motor grader so we can right. keep up production because the rain's just hammered us and we can't delay roads. How many how many graders do we own? <coughs> Two. On the east side, one on the west side. How many hours do they have on? That I do not know. I think I probably ran one of them. <laughs> 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 I've been around long, yeah. Forty years. I want to say yes. We had a third one that was an old galleon that, like nineteen sixty or something. We finally got rid of it. Cool. Well, you know, and again, that's that's really, that's really part of the reason I brought it up was we just need to make sure that you know, yeah, they are tight, budgets are tight. But they got to have equipment to work. Um, I, I was speaking to him about mowing the roads and stuff. We've got one bush hog, you know, and then we got one, we got one operator. It's just, we, it's, it's hard. You got you got an entire county. Uh, I know Alan's been getting hammered on on Facebook about his cemeteries. I went out today, out of the entire cemetery, four lots, 
weren't mowed. The entire cemetery where the complaints were taking place was mowed and looked nice. But that's just the kind of things we're getting. People spend you know, more time so, complaining than they do complimenting. But, but, but they do. But they need the, they need the positive feedback. You yeah. know, I, I try to make a point when I see the guys. I tell them myself. So, we, but that's something they need. So, if you're, if you're in your district and you're complaints, I'm just going to challenge you to get in your car and ride out and check it out yourself. It's rainy season, and um, not just that. It's just like your yard, you know. But then when they do go out, they go out in the group and they get the job done. So, but when I mow, you make fun of me because I'm. That's, that's you. All right. <laughs> Thank you again. Meeting adjourned.